Good afternoon. Um, I'm Stuart and I'm from uh, Culloden Christian Assembly um, and I've been asked to speak to you this afternoon on the subject of the greatest love. And um, we'll read one verse uh, from the Bible and it's found in John chapter 3 and verse 16 and it reads like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a verse in which we read about some of the big things in life, about God and love and life and death, faith and humanity. It's the most famous verse in the Bible. And on a very personal note, it was the first verse of the Bible that I ever learned as a little boy. I was taught it by my grandmother. It's been rightly described as the gospel in a nutshell. In just a few words, it summarises the gospel. That is the good news message of the Bible. The verse begins with uh, these two words, for God. The Bible asserts that there is a God, that there is one who is the originator of all things, that he's more than just some force. He is personal. He thinks, he feels and acts. He's interested in creation. He's moral. He sets the standards of what's right and wrong, what's good and bad. He himself the Bible teaches, is absolutely righteous. The Bible teaches that human beings were created by God in the image of God, that we've been made to know him, that we've been made to know the difference between right and wrong, that we've been made with a conscience. You and I, we know innately the difference between what's right and wrong. We all know uh, that we haven't and can't do what's right all the time. True Christians know in measure just how imperfect and failing we all are. God isn't like that. He always does what is good. He always does what is right. The Bible tells us that he is of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Because he is absolutely pure and holy and we are not, we're separated from him. We can't enjoy him as we were made to do. We learn uh, in, in this ver uh, verse as well about the world. This word, the world, encompasses all of humanity. It includes you and me. God is interested in all of humanity. He loves all of humanity. And as we go through this verse, we'll, we'll learn something of the greatness of God's love towards humanity. For God so loved the world that he gave. Giving is one of the characteristics of love. When we truly love someone or something, we express it in giving. We might give gifts. We might give our time. We might give our energy to those people and those things that we love. When we really love someone, we put them first. We put their preferences in front of our own. Later in the Gospel of John, the Lord Jesus says this, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Love is self-sacrificial. And for those we love most deeply, we are willing to sacrifice even our own lives. How was God's love displayed to humanity? Well, our verse goes on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He is God. He has always existed. He was there when everything was created. Perfect love has existed between God the Father and God the Son for all eternity. He, in so many ways, is unlike any son that's be ever been born. He's completely perfect. He's completely unique. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He was sent by God into this world with a purpose given to him by the Father. John, uh, in John chapter 10 and verses 17 to 18, we read this. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may, may take it again. That's talking about his resurrection. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. His purpose, his reason for coming into the world was to die. 
to die for people like us who disobey God, who perhaps aren't interested in God, who rebel against God. We are separated from God because we are far from sinless. And he is perfectly holy and perfectly sinless. We can't go to heaven no matter what good and kind and noble things we might have done. They can't cover up all the, they can't cover up the things that we have done wrong. They can't cover up what our Bible calls our mm -hmm. sins. We're helpless to put things right ourselves. That's why Jesus had to die. He's sinless. He's God. He's infinite and eternal. He was sent by God into the world on a mission to provide the uh, way, the opportunity for sinful human beings to have their sins forgiven and be brought back into a right relationship with God. How do we come into the good of what Christ has done? Well, that brings us to the next part of our verse, which reads like this, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In this clause there are two alternatives for humanity, eternal life or to perish. John 3, 36 helps us to understand what it means to, to perish. The Lord Jesus said this, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abides on him. It means that the righteous wrath of a perfect God who hates sin will remain for all eternity on those who reject him. But that's not the only way. The verse said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's love in giving his son provides for us a way of having our sins dealt with, uh, to have our sins forgiven so that we can enjoy a right standing before God, so that we can know eternal life, a life with a purpose, a life with eternal destiny, a life as God intended it to be. We can come into the good of this through faith, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, realising that we're sinners. We do things that are wrong. We fall so far short of God's perfect standard. And we can't do anything uh, by ourselves to put that right. But God has provided a way. And we, by placing our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that when he was dying on the cross, he was dying in our place, we can have our sins forgiven. And we come into the good and the enjoyment of eternal life and we're promised a home in heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a verse that divides into two parts. The first per part is, is God's part. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God has done everything he possibly can to provide us with a way back to him. But there is a certain responsibility upon us as we come into the second part of the verse that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God isn't going to force anyone into heaven. God doesn't force anyone to faith in Christ. We have a responsibility to recognize our standing before God and place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll just finish by reading that verse once more. For God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Shall we pray? Our God, we bow before you today in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for giving your son as a sacrifice for sin. We thank you for providing a way back for sinners like us. We thank you that we come into the good of it 
by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for him today and we just pray for anyone who's listening to this message that you'd bless them in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, taking time to, to join us today.